This is the closest I'm ever going to get to being a Pearl Jam. You know that, right? <laughs> Staring at you guys. For those people that can't see it, and that's everybody, um, I am in a, a large studio here at Made of Ale. This is the MV3. Is that where we're uh, meeting? MV3. And uh, I'm sitting directly in front of all five members of Pearl Jam, and it's great to see you guys back in the UK. Thanks for saying hi. Thank you. All right, cool. So how's the voice, Eddie, after the three-hour marathon show at the O2 last night? Uh, well, I don't know if it was the best planning to do uh, BBC radio performance. Yeah, early the next morning. We know our place. It's okay. Well, we 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 think that we consider this as a an honor and an important thing, and we grew up listening to all our favorite bands doing this, and and um, so I wish we had a you know it was it, it, it's a little harder coming in after a, it was a long sweaty yeah <laughs> night. The whole tour has been kind of that way, but people have been great. And, um, and the other thing, we have loads and loads of friends here. And I wasn't about to cut that short, just Fair enough. out of respect to your station. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, to <laughs> how we shouldn't get in the way of any form of celebration after a show that was, you know, what you played last night. I couldn't make it, and I explained to Stone I was on the radio, and it just would have been too awkward. But everything I've read about and heard about it today was that it was the vintage, the best Pearl Jam show you've ever played in the UK. I mean, would you agree as a whole that it felt like it was it was the right? the right show I felt that way yeah I felt like uh, the, the crowd was uh, incredible and I think that we were we were we finally kind of got our like our fifth fifth or sixth show under our belt and mm-hmm. we're kind of firing on all cylinders and I, I loved it it was a great time and you guys you know you rehearse relentlessly before you tour as we established <laughs> as we established as we established on the phone the other day when I mentioned that and Eddie laughed and he laughed for about five minutes and it got awkward and he didn't start laughing mm-hmm. well it's funny now I said you know all this work that goes into exactly. it and all these yeah and then the people ca- and then and yeah and then the veneer is quickly and is then quickly dr- dragged there you go the veneer is quickly snatched so away four full rehearsals four you know three four hours took a break and yeah. That was shows, Stone. I don't know if you remember. They were actually gigs in front of a real oh, paying audience. Yes. <laughs> That's what they were. Gigs uh, for dogs. <laughs> um, the first recorded session track we're going to take. God, I love those shoes, Mike. They are Thank you, uh, Crocs. They're incredible. I've never seen those ones before. Very comfortable. Yeah, yeah. and they look amazing. <laughs> I digress. The Fixer, we're going to take as the first recorded session track that you guys have already done here in the, in the, in the room. And um, it, it was deemed the first song for us to play on radio, taken from the new album. Um, called Backspacer. Was that your decision, or do you, do you let somebody else kind of do that? Yeah, I think it was um, an easy decision. There was just something about it that seemed... Um, you know, you try not to put too much thought into this kind of stuff. It's not like you're marketing or, or trying to, you know, manipulate this kind of thing too much. You just you just want people to... But you do know that people will have uh, an opinion or get a feeling of whatever they hear first. Mm. As a radio DJ, <clears throat> you know it's it's it is important. You know, for me, whenever a, a great band comes back with a new record, that I feel when I when I press play on that song, then it's going to detonate. You know, even if it's a slower track or an emotive track, that it's going to have some major impact. And you didn't let me down, and you didn't let the fans down. This is a great tune, and, and we'll see how you guys went on with the legendary years of MIDI in the in the control room. See how this sounds. This is Pearl Jam, the Fixer, already one. Matt Cameron song, is that right? Uh, one of yours? Partially. Uh, Can, cans on Cameron. Come on, take this no seriously. <laughs> I've had these things on for hours. Uh, yeah, I brought in just kind of the riff, you know, a couple little riffs uh-huh. strung together, and um, we recorded it into our little computer thing, and did it. Eddie did a, an edit after our rehearsal, and came back the next day, and voila, done. Number one, there you go. <laughs> Number one with done a bully, done. with a bully, Fork uh, in it, magic. <laughs> Put a ribbon on it. <laughs> All right, really? I don't believe that for a I second. I mean, we actually recorded tape. We cut tape. Excuse me. There you go. Old school with a coin. Of course. <laughs> With a coin. It's <laughs> English. A dull dime. Sorry. Five pence. <laughs> Five pence. <laughs> uh, Old timey recording techniques. Um, is that kind of symbiotic of how the album came together? You know, the way that it was recorded overall, that it seemed to flow as easily as the fix it came through? Uh, what was nice is that these guys got together um, uh, without me. Really, without That must have been nice, fellas. Telling me. <laughs> <laughs> Secret um, meetings. Yeah, I was I was thrilled to hear. The era of tyranny has finally come to an end. <laughs> oh, it was so welcome. <laughs> so exciting. And and so things that what what they did do is they put a lot of work into it. Um where they was presented the, the the musical ideas were presented more uh, much closer to song form and, and mm. what so uplifting about part of the process was that it enabled you to just immediately tackle the thing and 
you know, throw a vocal on it and a, and a meaning to it, and a, like immediately. So a lot of them are written real quick and 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 happen quickly as far as the lyrics, and but it's all because of them getting in, into such a galvanized form. Yeah, that's magic. I mean, this this record when it came to an end, you could all sit there in a room really comfortably and confidently and know that this was just it was exactly how Absolutely. it was meant to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, I noticed that uh, that in, in terms of putting the record out this time around not to go directly into business too quick but i think it works in, in in accordance with your history as a band and what you achieve i was just you know just thinking on the you know on the way in to do the interview as well about the the fact that you fought to make sure you that the local record stores can still distribute your records and people who want to go and be part of a scene and hang out with like-minded people can still find a Pilgrim record on a shelf um you know who's got of course there's only three of left. three shops left <laughs> exactly but you fought a good fight for those three yeah you know, well and it's something that's important 600 i think somewhere in that range in america 600 indie stores that's or it? in that in that in our in the in the grouping of group. indie stores that's just terrifying isn't it where, yeah. do, where do people meet <laughs> these days you know and talk about records apart from online i mean that's just it isn't how yeah, people do that but who's got the best sort of independent you know music story like like you know mike what was it like when you were kind of growing up and you used to go to your local record store what was your local record store like and just sit the scene for kids who are never going to have that experience now you well know? it was uh it was exciting because there was a record store which is still around called easy street records and it was it's been there for about 20 years and they're the the first kind of small a smaller record store that wasn't a chain uh that could get import records from here and that we got you know the new wave of british heavy metal the stuff i was kind of into at that time and mm -hmm. i got to hear about motorhead via them and we like you were saying we would all our friends would go there and gravitate and hang out and go oh that's the cool that's a new motorhead record let's get that or <laughs> hanoi rocks what are they all about and, and that's the only way you could kind of find out about or Kerrang or anything that was happening mm -hmm. over here. And, which Motley Crue on easily. leather records. Yeah. yeah what what about like people with taste? No, I'm joking. I'm <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I was just kidding. I was like <laughs> <laughs> so it was exciting. The, the Motley, actually, the Motley Crue record when it came out, there's I think there's only four in Seattle, and I think Easy Street had one of them. And, wow. And it, so it was it was a much of a gathering place for all of us to hang out. Mm -hmm. Important. Yeah, without a doubt. Well, it's good you guys are still looking out for them, you know, and I think it's important to mention to anybody out there listening that Motley Crue still suck. And, uh, you can push records are right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. God, we were talking about Fred Durst like we can talk, you know. We had a full-scale conversation about Limp Bizkit before. Who? That's going in. What? That's going in. That's going in. I got the, I got control over the cut. Zane, Don't get Durst were, mad. You will clarify that I was not involved in that conversation. You were not involved in that conversation, no. I was saving Papa pa Roach for you, but later on, so it's all good. <laughs> um, I want to talk specifically about the next song. In fact, I'm, I'm going to save the end to the end because it's such an amazing moment, I think, on the record. So let's talk about Godson as a song, which is, um, I'm trying to think, it, it's track number three on the record from yep. memory, and it, and, it, and it flies by, and it's a proper heads-down moment. Was, tell us a bit about that. What's the story behind that song, Jeff? Set the scene. Uh, just a couple of couple of parts, and I, I think, uh, the demo had a little bit of a new wave kind of flavor to it. Um, I think the guitar tone. On you the, killed that pretty quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Sort of the feel and everything. You know, Jeff wrote the tune. Mm. Uh, so uh, th there was aspects of the demo that I, I think that we we did try to try to keep, but mm. Um, mm. obviously the you know the the vocals just added it added so much more. Yeah, it's a great tune. Let's check out the recorded session version of Godsum, and um, we'll come back and catch up with Pearl Jam one last time in a sec. Good to see you guys out here. It always feels so rare. It's really not that rare that you come out to the UK, but for some reason it still feels rare. I don't know. I, I think it's a good thing. It feels rare that you guys come out and play, although you're only here a few years ago. You must really look forward to coming back out here and playing in the UK because your fans are... It was great playing Shepherd's Bush. Yeah. That was a super fun gig, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've systematically missed every single fan club show <laughs> you guys have played in the UK. So what? We, we hear the Astoria is no longer, is that true? Astoria has sadly passed away, yeah. yeah. That was a real moment, you know, for mm. everybody to... Because there was a big fight going on for that. Um, you know, genuine <coughs> street movement to try and keep that. Yeah. And I'm not sure how realistic it ever was because it's prime real estate in the middle of central London, you know, and, yeah. and they made yeah. their decision long ago. I think, if anything, they probably left it, they probably let it go a bit longer just to keep people happy. Right. Um, right. But it's sad because it's a great venue, and you guys played a show there not long ago, too. Yeah, I'm glad we got to mm -hmm. experience that. Yeah. Just like here, you know, this is an amazing this building. This awesome, ain't going man. nowhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this go. is going this nowhere. Is this is an institution right here. This is going nowhere. They keep throwing long. rumors around about it, and people just... You're kidding. Straight yeah, part. No one, I don't think people even acknowledge it. 
It's like, what? Well, I want to make it back to into a roller rink. Yeah. 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 All this stuff. Can I invest in that? Please. Yeah, dude. That's, that's a, it'll be a really good totally. American investment. I want an extra special hip hop shout out. Scheme. Shout out to Matt Cameron over here. Normally, people come and see the Bing Crosby plaque, and that's the level of the history that they're willing Ow. to go. You know about the roller rink Thanks history. Thanks to Mitty, my yeah. man. There you go. Now you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a great place. And, that's um, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good that we could get you in here again. We'll make it continue. Um, well, it's good to finally see you guys. Thanks for coming in. And um, Thank thanks for another great record. Uh, it's called Backspacer. And we're going to take the last song, which is called The End, which fits its place nicely in the running order of the record and is, um, without a doubt, one of the best things that you've ever done, I think. And lyrically, I had to listen to two or three times just to kind of get, get my head around it. I, I think it's brilliant. So can you just give us a few words about this lyric without destroying the, the mystery of it and just what it was like to write? Again, it, it came real quick, and I just don't... I, I just... I think... Having written for a number of years and a number of records and a number of different reasons, I just can't handle taking more than half hour on a. If it doesn't, if it's not going to happen quick, wow. I just don't even want to do it because it means there's another one out there. Yeah. That is going to happen quick and that it is. It's going to just hit you like a lightning bolt and um and that's just that's all I can say about it. Just. I'm not sure where it came from, how it came. Mm -hmm. It just came, and uh, I was lucky enough to, you know, have a tape recorder I could plug in real quick and make a, a decent recording out of it. This is going to be a moment of everybody listening around uh, around the world, without a doubt. This is this is one to keep in the BBC archives forever and ever. And we say thank you very much to Pearl Jam. It's been good to see you. Safe travel. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thank you, Zane. Thanks. I had a Jackson for us. Well done.